Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on limiting reactants. Now suppose I want to make, you know, my famous grilled cheese sandwich. Now the recipe for this sandwich is pretty complex. I got two slices of bread and I have one piece of cheese. I know, hold the phone. Um, so let's say I have 10 slices of bread and seven pieces of cheese. How many sandwiches can I make? Easy math, you figured out I can make only five sandwiches, and I'm gonna have some leftover cheese, two pieces of cheese. Pretty simple. This is analogous with how chemical reactions work in terms of the reactants that are involved. Now, thus far, we've talked about different reactants, but let's go back to my analogy really quick. The amount of bread available, that 10 slices, limited how many total sandwiches I could make, that I could produce. Because once I ran out of bread, I had cheese left over and I could make no more sandwiches without more bread. This is analogous to how chemical reactions work. We usually have two reactants. They react together in some way. And this is just something simple here, but they react together in some way and at the atomic level one reactant is going to run out or be completely consumed before the other one has had a chance to be consumed because those reactants are reacting together to form your product. Now, so one reactant is used up before another. Once this happens, the reaction stops. It stops as soon as that reactant is completely consumed, leaving the leftover reactant as what we call excess. Now, the reactant that is completely consumed is called the limiting reactant. It's called the limiting reactant because it determines or limits the amount of product made. Once that reactant runs out, I can no longer make product because there's no more material. There's no more bread. I can't make any more sandwiches. Now. We can determine the limiting reactant in a chemical reaction using two methods. The first method is by relating your reactants. Here's my chemical equation. I have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas, creating water. I have 10 moles of hydrogen gas initially, and I have 7 moles of oxygen gas initially. In order to relate these two reactants, I'm going to ask myself either one of these questions, or you can even ask both if you'd like. First. If all my oxygen gas is used completely, how much hydrogen gas will be needed for that to happen? This is kind of looking from the cheese's perspective. Let's go back to the analogy with the cheese and the bread. If I'm the cheese, then from my perspective, there's, there's seven pieces of meat, right? If I'm the cheese, I have seven cheese slices. Then I'm going to need 14 pieces of bread in order to make as many sandwiches as possible. So that's looking from oxygen's perspective. The second question is, if all H2 is used completely, how much oxygen will be needed? So it's from the opposite perspective. It's from the bread's perspective. So the bread's saying, well, it's 10 slices of meat. How many pieces of cheese will I need? Well, the bread's going to need five slices in order to make um, as many sandwiches as it can. Because it's two slices of bread per a piece of cheese. Now, how I do this... Stoichiometrically, um, I'll show you here for number one. So, if all O2 is used completely, how much H2 will be needed? So we have to relate these two together stoichiometrically. We, do, you, we use the mole ratio to do that. So the mole ratio between these two is given by our coefficients, of course. So if I want all seven moles of O2 to react or to be completely used up, then for every one mole of O2, I know I'm going to be using or needing two moles of H2. Moles of O2 cancel, and I have 7 times 2. It's going to be 14 moles. For example here, I'm not doing significant figures right now, just 14 moles of H2. That's how much I would need in order for all seven moles of O2 to react. 
to be completely used up. But if I notice, initially, I don't start with 14 moles of H2. This is hypothetical, meaning if I want all of this to react, I need 14 moles of H2. Well, I don't have 14 moles of H2. So, since I started with 10 moles of H2 available, but we'll need 14 moles of H2 in order for all 7 moles of O2 to react, that means all 7 moles of O2 cannot react. I will have some left over because I don't have enough H2 for it all to react. I only have 10 moles, but I really need 14 moles. So that means H2 would be my limiting reactant. It's going to limit how much I can make. Now, if that didn't make sense, let's look at the second perspective. If all H2 is used completely, how much O2 will be needed? So I start from the perspective of H2. So hydrogen gas, if it's going to relate to oxygen gas, for every one mole of oxygen gas, I will need two moles of hydrogen gas. Moles of hydrogen gas cancel, and I have 10 divided by 2. That's 5 moles of oxygen gas. So this is saying, in order for all 10 moles of hydrogen gas to react, I will need to have at least 5 moles of oxygen gas at my disposal. And I do have at least 5. I have 7, in fact. So this means that all 10 moles can react, and I'm still going to have 2 moles left over, because 7 minus the 5 that I'm going to use up equals 2 moles. That 2 moles left over is called your excess. So since all of my H2 can be used up, and I still have oxygen left over, H2 is my limiting reactant. This is one method to finding, finding out which uh, reactant is going to be limiting. Another method is this. You can calculate the amount of product that each reactant is going to produce and then compare those two amounts. So using the same equation, same initial amounts of reactants. Let's look into this. Okay, so the first question is, how much H2O is produced from 10 moles of H2? So you want to see how much of your product you get from one of your reactants. In this case, 10 moles of H2. I do my math. I have 10 moles of H2. I use my mole ratio here, 2 moles of H2 to 2 moles of H2O. Moles of H2 cancel, and then I'm left with 10 over 2, 10 times 2 over 2, which is just 10. Okay, that means nothing on its own. I have to compare this to what I get when I use oxygen gas. So, the next one we do is how much H2L is produced from 7 moles of oxygen gas. So from this reactant, first perspective, that reactant, now we're going from this reactant. So 7 moles of O2 over the mole ratio between water and oxygen gas. Moles of O2 cancel. I have 7 times 2 moles of H2, so that's going to be 14 moles of H2O. Now we compare these two numbers that we've gotten. 10 moles of H2 can make 10 moles of H2O. 7 moles of O2 makes 14 moles of H2O. Now, the reactant that makes the least amount of product is your limiting reactant. It will determine how much product you will produce. It will determine your theoretical yield. So the reactant that creates the least amount of product, this 10 moles of H2O, the reactant that creates this is your limiting reactant. So that means H2, which you started with, your 10 moles of H2, is your limiting reactant. 
So in this case, H2, our limiting reactant, good and good. Gentlemen, please take notes. If you have questions, come prepared to ask them.